Okay, so we are live now. I'm gonna make you host and then you have to make me co-host again. Good morning, Josephina. Hello. Hi, Valerie. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hi, Loretta. Hi. How's your morning, or is it the afternoon for you? Oh, uh, it's still morning. Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Afternoon for me. Yeah. I guess we're all different time zones, that's for sure. Yeah. Hi, Rita. Come on in. This is Hi. great. Hi. Uh, sunny day where I am. It's just 9.30 a.m. in uh, Pacific uh, Western time. So uh, great. Just give it another minute or so and uh, make sure everybody shows up. And our recording going. So yes, yeah, so today's class, uh, today's on is a new class. I actually think I've only taught it one time so far. I think last week was the first time. So yeah, so this class is on arthritis management and relief. So kind of a popular subject. I've had a lot of people interested in this one and actually ask about it. That's why I created this class. So uh, we've got the recording going already. I am going to get my chat box up. So I have it. Now, um, the best way to, to ask a question or to add a statement or, you know, a little, like a small story, if it, it, if it fits with what I'm speaking on, is to use the reactions button down at the bottom there, the reactions button, where you can raise your hand to ask a question, or you can also, um, you know, give a thumbs up or a, a clap or something if you're, you know, agreeing with what I'm saying. These are all the little things we do now. Um, because we can't be in person. So this is just a way to sort of feel like we're in person. And we have Michael, I believe, yes, it's Michael working um, in the chat. He's our support person. So if you have any questions about technical stuff, just ask him. So let's get sharing my screen. Make sure we're all in the right place. So today is all about arthritis. And I'm really going to try and focus on the relief part of it because I don't know, whenever they say managing something, I always feel like, I, I guess in a way it's maybe to give you relief, but it's more just sort of managing that you've got these symptoms. So this, what I'm going to teach today is more, is also going to talk about how we can relieve some of these symptoms, how we can reduce some of these symptoms, because that's, I think, what most people would like to know, not just how to manage the pain. All right, and... For those who have not met me yet, I'm pretty sure I've met most of you, but uh, my name is Ravina. I'm one of the guides at Get Set Up. I started back in end of January, I believe it was, started teaching in, in February. And 
My focus is always on the health and wellness, sometimes personal growth classes. So if you haven't taken any of my classes, be sure to check the schedule. I teach Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday mornings. So that's that's uh, right now what availability I have for teaching. So if you're looking for any health classes by me, um, look on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So I've been interested in health and wellness a long time. I ended up doing my nursing degree at university. I, I applied for nursing and occupational health. I wanted to do something along those lines and uh, was quite happy to have gotten into nursing and doing that. And then in my early days of nursing, I realized that the pain and suffering all comes when someone gets sick or injured, they end up in the hospital, it's hard on the loved ones, it's hard on the individual that's sick. And I thought, what can we do to prevent a lot of these things? Can we prevent ourselves from getting sick in the first place? So that's where I focused my time and functional nutrition and that sort of thing. So we do learn from each other. If you can put your camera on, that's awesome. You get to see each other. We can see how we're all getting healthier um, with our big, bright smiles on our face and just feeling more, um, I don't know, just more used to Zoom, I think. Maybe we're getting a little bit more used to this um, seeing each other uh, over Zoom. And, and it's kind of neat to make friends all across the country and across the world. That's the neat part about doing online teaching like this. Uh, we are recording and you can ask for a copy of that at the end. And we are live streaming today. So sometimes our class gets live streamed. And so hi to everybody out there who might be um, coming in from live stream to see what we're all about today. So that's wonderful. And then lastly, we don't get paid any kickbacks for anything I might talk about. And I do sometimes talk about services or, or particular products. So today we're going to understand the different types of arthritis and how, what their causes are. We're going to learn nine ways to naturally relieve our arthritis pain. And we're going to learn five foods that may help relieve this arthritis pain. And of course, if you've taken any of my classes, I always have something to do with food in the classes because I, as uh as Dr. Hyman, Dr. Mark Hyman, believe that food and our nutrition is the center of healthcare. I really truly believe that. And I've been working as a nurse like over 35 years, so uh, retired now, but uh, I've just seen that the focus on nutrition really makes a huge, huge difference. All right, so is everybody settled, feeling good? You have your water. I'm going to put my water on this side and pen and paper if you want to take notes. I will let you know right up front for all of you that did register for the class and are here. I have a nice little special treat at the end when I send the post email out to you with a few little notes to just uh, um, summarize what we learned today. I have a beautiful PDF that I will show it to you at the end of the class if we have time that you will get a copy of and it's in PDF form so you can print it and make a little booklet out of it. And it's going to have some really interesting little tips on how to improve your kitchen and your other parts of your home to help you if you've got some arthritis and how we can and just help to uh, to eliminate some of the pain we have when we're trying to do stuff in the kitchen, etc. So that comes at the end. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, I want to ask a quick question because I do like to have engagement. Who here knows how many types of arthritis there's actually there, there is actually out there? I mean, it does vary, obviously, because new things get discovered. Anybody have an idea about how many types of arthritis there are? Two? Yeah, those are the two that, that are probably the most common that, that I know of as well. There's actually a hundred different kinds of arthritis. I, and, you know, and I find that like super interesting that there's that many. Yeah, I know. Teresa said four, but you know what? Oops, there's my little button on my... This is my sit-stand desk, so sometimes my elbow hits my button and the desk starts moving. So yeah, there's over a hundred. So we're going to go through this, but basically, arthritis is that inflammation that we get in our joints around our of, of our joints, and it can be really debilitating joint pain. Tough to get up in the morning sometimes. Just just even if you've been sitting for a while, have you noticed that if you get up, it's just it's almost like you've got to like straighten yourself out, whatever, depending on what joints are bothering you. So, in fact, there's around 50 million adults and, get this, 300,000 children in America, now I took the stats for the United States, that have arthritis today. That's a lot of people. 
arthritis is ageless. So we forget that. Um, I myself don't know of a young person that has arthritis, like a young, young person, but there are some young people that have arthritis and we forget. And you can imagine if you're a young young child in school and you can't play basketball or you're having issues with just everyday things that kids do. You know, it's one thing to be 60 and have arthritis. It's another thing if you're a child, but 300,000 of our children uh, suffer from arthritis. There's many causes and different treatments depending on what form of arthritis you have. So I always like to start my classes just so we get a little bit of a lesson in terms of um, you know, either it's a little history lesson I put in and like my natural uh, remedies class or just to give a little bit, not to bore us, but just to kind of get an idea where, where we're going in the class. So I know Colleen had said there's two types. Well, we because we, we hear about these two types of arthritis all the time. Osteoarthritis, and I'll, I'll refer to it as OA. It's a degenerative type of arthritis, and it is the most common type of arthritis. And many of us get will be affected by it. It affects around 27 million in, in the US, this type of arthritis. The cartilage in the joint, joint starts to break down. That's what happens. It's the cartilage that starts to wear down. And then it causes, when it gets to that extent, bone on bone. And you can imagine how awful that must feel. It gets infl inflamed, there's pain, the, there's an injury to your bone when you're bone on bone like this. And you can even fo form bone spurs, which are very, can be very, very painful. Not good. Uh, I've had that in my heel where I've had a bit of a heel spur and it's just, it's painful. I, I can't describe it any other way. All right. So, you know, in this picture, you can see like it gets inflamed, it's not feeling great. And sometimes something will set it off. The risk factors for osteoarthritis, age, and unfortunately, as we age, we have a higher risk of getting OA. Obesity, unfortunately, that's not a, um, an easy one because uh, it's tough to manage weight sometimes. For most people, it is. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be obese. If it was easy to just not be obese, we wouldn't see anybody that was overweight like that. So we need to be kind to ourselves and to the people around us. It's not that easy. We don't know what their life has been like, what they've gone through. Injuries. Has anybody actually injured themselves, even maybe as a child or a, a, as a young adult, that has kind of caused a little bit of arthritis now? Anybody had some type of injury? Sometimes it could be a sports injury. I actually had my knee bashed. Uh, I was on a golf course, actually, not even, you know, I was minding my own business. I was taking a picture. I was in Hawaii and they had these beautiful black swans taking a picture. And it was my brother that was in the power cart and he actually had a seizure. That's another story. But he kind of blanked out a little bit and the power cart came and hit the side of my knee. So since that happened, it was like getting hit by a car. This knee, I have arthritis in it because of an injury. So that's where mine came from. Plus there's a family history, which is the next one, family history. If you've got family history of arthritis, that can also, there's a little bit of a hereditary thing when it comes to OA. And then joint overuse, where do we see that? Can anybody think of a, a something where we would see joint overuse? Exercise. Yes, there's some people that over exercise. Yes, we can actually over exercise. Exciting to all of you, because you guys are the first to hear about this. And I guess anybody that's live streaming. My, I just finished my class on diabetes management and remission. And that's the key, remission. So my diabetes class is coming out hopefully in a few weeks. And it's going to really, anybody who's worried about pre-diabetes or has diabetes, it's going to be a great class. But the one I'm working on today, which I started, is on longevity. Very, very, very exciting. And when it comes to longevity, to get back to the joint overuse, we can over exercise and, and lower our longevity. Did you know that? Um, sports. Colleen, you have a question. No, I was just going to say, my next door neighbor just finished graduate school in physiotherapy, and he is seeing neck and shoulder and hand in young people from mm -hmm. using their phones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it's a thing. And, and, and did your physiotherapist neighbor tell you they, they even have like a little bump in the mm -hmm. back of yeah. their neck, uh, back of their, you know, below their neck from yeah. hunched over and on their phones all the time. I mean, let's face it, we see young people, but I see a lot of 
people my age sitting on their phones too a lot. Maybe not quite as much as the young people, but there you go. We're we're evolving because of what we have in our in our world and our technology and stuff. The overuse of joints, there, there's people that become obsessed with, um, addicted to exercise, right? They can be addicted to smoking, like you can be addicted to food, you can be addicted to exercise. And I know a few people in my past that when I was in university that were addicted to exercise. Then there's those that play sports and you can, you can have a joint overuse from sports. And, um, you know, you can get, end up with that bone spur in your foot from, I don't know, from skiing or from, uh, you know, uh, what's the other thing, uh, windsurfing or being out on, the, on a surfboard. So these are the risk factors for osteoarthritis. For me, it's mostly the family, I think the family history and the injury that I had. So what are some of the symptoms we have the way? I'll go through this pretty quickly because we want to get to... Um, um, we want to get to like, you know, the good stuff, right? So joint soreness, who has joint soreness? Uh, I'm here in BC and Canada on the West Coast. We have quite a moist uh, um, environment. It's not very dry. So moisture in the air hurts the joints a little bit more. A lot of people from Canada, when we had the borders open, um, would go to Arizona or to Palm Springs. Dry heat seems to be better for the joints. Maybe you've noticed that. Morning stiffness, which we'll talk about a bit more in the next um, type of arthritis, but lack of coordination because you just don't have that fluidity in your body. And it can increase, it, it, in increasing disability, it seems to kind of like it's degenerative, right? OA is a degenerative type of illness. But I'm here to teach health and wellness at Get Set Up to teach us how can we reverse some of these things? How can we stop these things that we once considered degenerative, including diabetes, right? We think of that as, oh, it's just going to get worse. No, it doesn't have to. It does not have to. We can, we, can, we can improve our hair. We can improve all sorts of things. So you're going to learn those, those types of things in, in classes that you take of mine. Because uh, I'm taking a holistic approach. That's the reason is because I've studied holistically how to look at things. So what's the second most common? RA, rheumatoid arthritis. This one is more of an autoimmune disease. And it, it's like your body is attacking its own joints. It's, it's quite a, can be quite severe. Now you remember the numbers, we talked about 50 million adults with arthritis and 27 or so with OA, 1.5 million um, have rheumatoid arthritis. So quite a bit less, but it still is a common thing. And it's three times more prevalent in women. Why is that? I don't know. I always think it's about hormones when it's more in women, but I, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't research it to, to that extent, but RA is very often you have that morning stiffness and it's typically the same joint on either side of your body. One of the things you'll notice with RA that might not be as apparent with OA is the joint deformity where you can see, if you see somebody's hand, you can see the joint deformities uh, developing that's become kind of permanent. You might not see it with osteoarthritis. Someone with osteoarthritis might not even look like they have anything wrong with them, but it, it, they're in, they have some pain. So I didn't want to bore you with, I didn't want to put a bunch of graphic pictures because it, it looks painful when you see somebody with rheumatoid arthritis in their hands or their feet or their parts of their body, it looks like they're in agony when they walk or move. All right. Just really quick, what are the other types of arthritis? Well, there's something called juvenile arthritis. That is the umbrella term. And then we have all the different types of arthritis that can affect a younger person. So we've got things like um, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, juvenile uh, dermatomysotisis, hard to say, I probably didn't say it right, so I apologize. Juvenile lupus, we've heard of lupus, juvenile scleroderma. So those are different types of arthritis. Then you have the other types, um, the spondylotypes, ankylosing, ankylosing um, spondylitis. Have you, anybody heard of that one? I used to have somebody that worked with me that had AS. They like to shorten these things because I guess they're such long names. So OA, OA and RA, this one's AS. Has anybody heard of reactive arthritis or psoriatic arthritis? Yeah, psoriatic arthritis. There's a famous, a very famous golfer that has that disease. And he has managed to have a full um, flourishing golf 
career and still um, have psoriatic arthritis. And he's an older guy now. Gosh, I always forget his name. But anyways, anybody who's a golfer would know what his name is. Lupus, we've heard of lupus. And what about gout? That's a common one. You know, where it, it, you get the, the uric, acid, uh, uric acid forms crystals and it can really affect the foot, the big toe, for instance. So if you get that big toe pain, that could be gout. Yeah. And then the last one I wanted to mention, because we've heard about this, but we didn't really know. They actually put, yes, that's it. Thanks, Teresa. Phil Mick Mickelson. Uh, yeah, Mickelson. He, he's a pretty famous golfer. He's done quite well. Now, fibromyalgia, we've heard of, right? We hear about trigger points and pain and stuff. So they're kind of putting that in the in the scope of arthritis. Now, I don't know a lot about that, but when I was researching this, I was surprised to see fibromyalgia there. All right, so let's let's move on then. So doctors can prescribe medication often to relieve the pain of arthritis, but they also are very, this is one of those medical conditions where a doctor like the western medicine doctor is quite open to natural approaches have you noticed like maybe with diabetes they might not be very um you know they might just say i'll stick to the medication and they don't want to talk about natural approaches with you maybe you've got a uh, heart disease and they you know they they just want you to stick with the medication sometimes and not really talk about the natural approach but with arthritis they seem to be a little bit more open to the natural approach so please talk to your doctor if you're going to take up any natural approach as we go through the class. But, you know, it's good for them to know because you are possibly on medications. I remember my mom used to take Tylenol, but it was it was called ty arthritis, Tylenol for arthritis. I don't know uh, how different that was from regular, if that was marketing. You know, sometimes you see Tylenol and there's this for this one and this. I wonder if it's just the same product and it's just a different label. But maybe they add something to it to help with the arthritis because she used to take that very specific Tylenol. So we're going to look at the nine ways to relieve arthritis. And I'm going to get this one over with right away because, you know, after a while when we're overweight, which, you know, I'm still trying to get my weight to more of an optimal weight. You get sick and tired of hearing about weight management over and over and over again. Some of us might feel tired of that. But the truth is, uh, even with longevity, with diabetes, all these things, if we can manage our weight and get it to a weight that we're more comfortable in our body, don't you think our joints are going to feel better? There is evidence that being overweight is a risk factor for developing OA. So if you don't have it, and you are overweight, there's a chance you could you could develop it because maybe you injure your, your joints from the weight you're carrying around. Try, try this, like if you've lost say 10 pounds at some point, go and, go and lift a 10 pound weight. Can you imagine that 10 pound weight, putting that in a backpack and carrying it around with you? 10 pounds, just losing five or 10 pounds is, is such a difference on your frame. So the, the reason the connection with weight carrying extra weight around is the wear and tear that you're putting on your joints. So theory, theoretically, you lose a couple pounds, you're diminishing the discomfort on your joints. Here's a tip, uh, even if you're feeling discouraged, one pound loss, you're, you're almost you're taking almost four pounds off of your knees, say knees are your problem, that the force of walking, one pound loss of weight takes off about four pounds off of your knees. I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty neat thing. There's lots of things to look at for weight management, um, uh, portion, so, portion control. Um, what's some other things for weight management, really moving your body every day, getting your getting out and moving your body it might be hard if your joints are sore. So if you can't go for a morning walk, maybe you go for an after breakfast walk. Uh, there, there are many things now, maybe one day I'll create a weight management uh, class that just focuses on that. But for right now, I think the two things is healthy eating, trying to eat whole foods versus the processed packaged foods and moving your body every day. That's the number one. So we get to the next one. Number two is about getting movement in. Movement. Um, I would suggest that you look at the low impact movement. So, you know, not getting outside and, you know, getting running shoes and going for a run. If you're, 
if you've got any kind of joint pain, running is probably not the thing. Running actually is not really great for your joints, period. I don't care if you're strong and young. I think you put too much uh, impact on your joints when you run, especially outside. But what are the low impact things we can do? I, I used to love swimming. I don't know if anybody here has, a, has pools near them or at home. Swimming is the best thing for your joints. You know, you can float. You can get some uh, exercise in. Uh, this is, looks like a little exercise class. They're doing exercises under the water to give them some resistance. Um, what about when you're in the water and you want to stretch something? Isn't that nice? Like you're in the water and you can actually get that deep stretch without your whole frame weight pushing on that joint. It's so nice to stretch out your body when you're in the water. Gentle yoga, Colleen has mentioned, has been wonderful for her joints. Yes, and we have so many yoga classes now with Get Set Up. Have you noticed? Like, I love it. And there's different instructors. Do so you find the one that you like? Uh, cycling takes a little bit of pressure off your joints because you're not pounding your, your feet down like you're, you're cycling. So a cycle at home or out on the street or in the park. Tai Chi is another lovely way to slow down our movements and work on our joints. And we have Tai Chi now at Get Set Up. The one thing I'll say about, about movement is if you can do some form of movement to build your muscles around the joint that's hurting. So if, for example, I'll use knees. If you can build the muscles around your knee, your knee is more supported. It's not going to hurt your joints as much. That's important. So yes, elliptical machine does, now, Valerie, do you have that at home? Is it in your home or you go to the, do you go to a boutique type of gym right now? I, I'm still going to my gym. It's a, sort of a boutique gym. You have to book your time and there's only like five of us in there and we have to wear a mask the whole time right now. But elliptical is a really nice way. Okay, she has it at home. That's wonderful. And get the elliptical to fit your body frame because you can go on some of those and it actually almost aggravates your knee because it's not the right angle. So play around with that. So we do want to get some movement. Now, this is an interesting one. You might not have heard of this one or thought of this one, but using cold and hot therapy can be very, very good for our joints. So I would say recommend using the hot therapy for times, either at nighttime when you're going to bed and you're just, you don't want to be aching and not be able to fall asleep. So a hot water bottle electric blanket, some kind of heating pad. You can, there's some that you can put in the microwave and heat up and then just have that with you if you don't want the hot water bottle. That's a great way to relieve your joint pain at night so you can fall asleep and get to sleep. Some people might want to use the hot water bottle in the morning if they have that morning stiffness, especially if you have RA. And then the other type of therapy is the cold therapy. We forget about the cold therapy because, you know, nobody wants a cold shower. Uh, it's too, it's too shocking, but to relieve joint swelling, or if your, your joint feels hot and inflamed, using a gel ice pack is awesome. So you can just keep that in the freezer at all times. You pull it out and the gel is beautiful because it just molds nicely into the shape of whatever, you know, putting it on your elbow or whatever's bothering you but we forget about cold treatment. So I, I wanted to bring that to our attention. So I put them both in as number three. All right, let's go to number four. Now, this might not be for everyone. I do, I am a believer of Eastern medicine as well as Western medicine. I've studied Western medicine. I've studied a little bit of Eastern medicine. I did study a little bit of TCM, which is traditional Chinese medicine. Acupuncture has, has been around in ancient Chinese practices for like years and years and years. They, you can sort of see now in this picture, this is the, the container. That's not the size of the needle. You can see a little needle here on the person's foot. Maybe if you can see that. And here you see the needle is super, super thin. Like it, it, you can barely feel it. It's a little prick. And the whole premise of acupuncture is it works on the meridians, the energy flow in our bodies. If there's a joint that's hurting, there might be a blockage of energy around that joint. So they do, um, you need a certified acupuncturist. They put, they might even put a needle, you know, up on your ear here to help 
flow for your knee. Like it's, it's very amazing. It's like reflexology on your foot. It's very interesting how different parts of our body, they put these little needles in and they tap on it. And what it does is it gets the energy flowing in that area. Pretty fascinating. If you haven't tried acupuncture, consider trying it if it doesn't scare you. I mean, I don't want it to scare you. The needles are just these teeny, teeny little needles, needles and you lie there and it just, you relax. And before you know it, you can't even, you don't even remember you've got needles in you. Um, has anybody tried acupuncture that's here today? Yeah. And it's funny because acupuncture is one of these things you, you come out of there and you go, did that work? Did that do anything? Maybe. And you don't feel like you've got any results. But it's sort of one of these, it, it's it's like a balancing thing. It kind of gets your body sort of more balanced. So it's more subtle. And you might think, ah, I don't think it did anything. But in actual fact, it's done a lot for you. So consider acupuncture. And try to get a licensed and certified person. And some medical programs or um, extended health benefits uh, that you might have can will cover acupuncture if it's by a certified acupuncturist. So that's really important to find someone who's not just doing it out of their, you know, basement kind of thing. The next one is meditation. It's a little bit underrated, the whole relaxation meditation. It really does help to reduce the pain of arthritis by really lowering your stress in general in your body and enabling you to just cope better with what's going on. You know, it could be you, you're starting to age and you think, is this how it's going to be every morning? I'm going to wake up in pain. I've had a few learners say that to me that it's so hard to be happy in the morning because they wake up in agony and mornings are tough for them. So we were talking about morning routines. That was in my morning routines class. And we talked about what kinds of things can we do to relieve some of our stress, uh, reduce some of that, maybe even distract us a tiny bit. So meditation Relaxing with some good music uh, is a great way to lower. And when we lower our stress, there's studies out there that suggest it may lower the inflammation and the pain that we're feeling. So just lowering our, our stress can reduce the, the pain that, we, that, we, that we're feeling. So a nice combination might be Tai Chi, Colleen's doing her morning yoga, and you combine it with a little bit of meditation. I believe with Tai Chi, they sometimes will do uh, that at the end of a yoga class. You do uh, sometimes that uh, relaxation and you kind of go into a little bit of meditation. It's great to combine these things. So if you find a class that does a little bit of that, that's awesome. It just will help us to cope with the arthritis pain. Not all of us can afford to like, you know, pack up and go to, to Florida or go or you know, to Arizona for, for the, for the winter months, you know, not everybody can afford to do that and, or have a second home. Some people do, they have a second place somewhere where they can, depending on weather. The next, um, the next one is about, is getting a massage. Now the, the information, the research will say, oh, massages don't improve your arthritis. Okay. It might not necessarily take away your arthritic condition, but overall it gives you a nice sense of, of wellness, like a sense of well-being when you have a, 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 um, a massage. Sometimes at first, you know, they start to massage a spot that's just so sore, like maybe it's your elbow and just the fact that somebody's touching you around your elbow is just almost, you're in agony. But over a little bit of time within a massage, it starts to reduce the pain. So sometimes we're just so scared to even touch. I used to hate having anybody touch anywhere near my knee because it was just so acutely uh, sore. But massage after a while will get the blood flowing to that area and can then slowly reduce the pain. I put on here shiatsu massage. This is some type of massage. Uh, it's, it's a Japanese um, origin that my mom used to really like. Now she was always embarrassed to have a massage. Like, you know, you go to a typical place, you, you kind of undress com almost completely and you're under this little tiny sheet. And she hated that. My mother, she's like, not with my body. I'm not doing that. She was a, she, you know, bless her heart. She's, she's in heaven right now, but um, she was just shy. She didn't, she thought nobody wants to see my overweight body. And so she didn't want to do massage until I introduced her to Shiatsu. Shiatsu, you stay, you remain fully clothed. 
you know, you put your, your comfy clothes on, but you can keep your full, full clothes on. You don't have to be shy or feel weird. Then the massage therapist, either they have you right on the floor, if you can get on the floor, or they can do it on a massage bed, which is the way this um, masseuse used to come to my mom's home, actually. In the beginning, she'd have to be super gentle because my mom would be in agony pain everywhere because of arthritis. But after a little while, my mom would almost just like relax, like stop holding like this, like almost holding your breath. And it relieved her, her, her pain from arthritis. So don't underestimate massage right now. Maybe we're staying close to home and we're not doing this. Maybe you've got a partner or a, or a, like, um, a son or daughter, or you know, somebody who can just come and massage your leg for you or your foot or whatever it is. Massage is amazing. All right. Now we're going to go to number seven. This one's interesting. This is very interesting. And Colleen mentioned her, the physio, physical therapist or physiotherapist that lives near uh, next door. We forget about physiotherapy because old school physiotherapy was you injured something, your doctor wrote a referral, you went to the physio, you didn't want to be there. You're in a, you're in this place and there's like six rooms or like, they're not even rooms. They're just like a, a curtain in between and the physio is jumping back and forth between each person. You know, that whole style of physiotherapy, things have changed. Physiotherapists, first of all, they are very smart. You know, what they study, they know about um, maintaining joints and, and our bones. They know about range of motion. They know about strength. Why don't we ask? Sometimes our doctor doesn't even think to give you a referral to a physiotherapist. So for any of you out there that have arthritis, why not have a referral to a physiotherapist who studies this stuff, who can help you with your range of motion? So you need a referral. Usually in Canada, we need a referral. I'm assuming in the States, do you need a referral to get, get to see a physiotherapist? Yes. So all physiotherapists aren't made, made the same. There are physiotherapy um, uh, specialists that specialize in arthritis. There are some that specialize in sports injuries. You know, you've got to like do your research. Find, I mean, maybe the one next door is, you know, is around about sports, but that's not going to help you. There might even be a physiotherapist that specializes in older adults, et cetera, et cetera. Get yourself connected to somebody who's going to help you for what your specific needs are. And boy, when they put a nice program together, they might even work with you like this lady's working with him on his range of motion, maybe with his knees, um, seeing how, how, um, how he, with his arms, what, what he can do, and then puts a particular program together for you to follow, whether that's in the water or when you go walking at the end of your walk or halfway through your walk, you do a few stretches up against the tree. Physiotherapists are underrated. So uh, uh, hopefully... I think people are still going to school for physiotherapy. I think it's quite a, um, it's a good job to have. So don't forget our physiotherapists. That's my little plug for physiotherapists. Now I was seeing one for my knee um, last year and I went for six treatments in, in, in a row, like six weeks in a row before I went on a, on a big trip. Now this, so it must've been two years ago we were going to Australia for a trip and I knew we'd be walking a lot and my knees were bugging me and I couldn't keep up with my husband. And I was really upset about that. I did six sessions with the physio. He gave me certain um, exercises. And when I went on my trip, guess what? I was able to walk. It was so great. Or walk the, the type of walking you do when you're on a holiday. All right. Um, okay. The next one, here's the other underrated occupational therapist it's not just for if you're in the hospital so I this is the the area of, of study I was thinking of going into when I did nursing an OT we call them OTs occupational therapists are the ones that help you find practical ways to manage particular day-to-day -day tasks and what they do is they help to minimize the effort so if you have a joint that is sore and you have arthritis there you still have to live you still have to make your dinner you still have to like do do household cleaning you know all the stuff that comes with everyday life 
your OT will come in, they, they usually do home visits. So they come into your environment and they look around and go, why is that way over there? Even like an occupational therapist uh, comes, they do ergonomic assessments. Like if you, from your working days when you were in the corporate world, they might come to your desk and go, why is your monitor at that level? You're straining your neck. Or they might say, why is your coffee mug holder way over here? You have to keep stretching. You just, like, things that we don't even realize we're doing that's causing us some, some agony or pain. So the occupational therapist will come into your home and, and, and help you organize stuff. Now, the best part about today's class is that handout I'm gonna give you at the end. I put this booklet together. A lot of the things and suggestions I give you in this booklet have come from occupational therapists' um, recommendations. So that, that's going to be fascinating. And things that you just didn't think of, like, oh, I didn't think I, I was straining myself by doing that movement every day as a habit. So that's coming up. But this, to me, the, this number seven and eight, you may not have even thought about it, but having a physical therapist, physiotherapist, and an occupational therapist come and do a little assessment with you, awesome. I think it's a really awesome thing. Does anybody have any questions where we're at right now? Any questions? All right. The ninth one, uh, eating a healthy diet with foods that help relieve arthritis. Fresh fruits, vegetables, those whole foods, all those things can boost your immune system and help your overall health. Now, there, are some, there is evidence that this good dietary choices can really positively affect you if you've got RA or OA. Now, I've got in red here, the things that affect and hurt arthritis and make it worse are the excess red meat, the excess processed foods, the saturated fats, the gluten-containing foods, unfortunately, alcohol, added sugar, and anything else that can cause infl inflammation in your body. It can aggravate the inflammation you already have around your joints. And it can make your arthritis worse. It really can. Now, um, let me just double check here. I'm just going to stop sharing for one sec. And let me just see. I'm just going to look here at my slides for one minute here. Just want to see what I've got left here. I've only taught this class one other time, so I just want to double check to make sure. Yeah, okay, that looks good. What we're going to get to. Okay, go. Oh, that's good. All right. So we. So let me just get my screen shared again. So if you've taken any of my other classes, you know that I talk a lot about healthy foods. Uh, eating, eating, eating the rainbow. Sounds funny. Eating the rainbow, a variety of vegetables. I try and pick out something different every time I go to the grocery store. Don't be afraid to talk to your grocer, talk to your produce guy and say, Hey, what is this? Like I sometimes see stuff. I don't even know what it is. I asked a lady the other day when I was grocery shopping, she was buying all this cabbage. I said, what is that Napa cabbage? I'd never heard of it. Well, now I find out it's a really, really wonderful cabbage. J Josephine is shaking her head because it's soft. It's not so hard. So if you want to make um, even cabbage rolls, oh, I've got this really great recipe to do the cabbage and you put your filling if you want meat or whatever. There's three things you do. You you soften the cabbage to start and Napa cabbage is a good one because it's softer already. You You soften it, then you fill it, then you put it in the steamer and you soften it again. And then here's the clincher, which is delicious. You take your coconut oil or, you know, whatever uh, oil in the pan, and then you fry it. So it's like a little burrito almost in your cabbage. Oh, it's so delicious. If you're trying not to eat wheat and grains and all those other things, I should put that recipe somewhere. So what else can cause inflammation in our body? I, I want to bring this up because I think it's important because I've just discovered it this year. And I didn't realize. So for any of you that are suffering arthritis pain, and this is not, I'm not against the dairy industry. So I'm going to say that up front. But did you know that dairy is pro-inflammatory? Typically, it's pro-inflammatory. What does that mean? That means that 
having any dairy products increases your inflammation in your body in general. You know, I'm not saying stop eating yogurt or stop drinking milk or stop eating cheese, but take a look at what you actually eat on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Are you eating a lot of dairy? Because if you are, maybe you kind of bought cheese on sale and like I did, I bought this huge big block of cheese. I was eating cheese every meal for like, and my arthritis pain, pain was, it was bugging me more so then I realized I was eating too much dairy product. I was putting, actually, I don't want to say, I don't want to even admit it. I was putting whipped cream, like the really nice whipped cream you can buy organic, of course, but it was still whipped cream in my coffee every morning, every morning I was having dairy. So anyways, all I'm going to say about it is, and it's not on the screen because I don't want to, I don't want to be against anybody who loves their, their dairy or has a dairy cow or has a farm or anything like that. Dairy naturally is inflammatory to our bodies. So if you really are interested in trying to reduce the inflammation in your body, consider low, like reducing the amount of dairy you put into your body. All right. I promise to give you some five foods that are going to help your arthritis. I want you to embrace turmeric. <laughs> I know it's sort of a, it's a different type of spice. It, you see it mostly in Indian, Indian style cooking. I'm, that's my background. But guess what? You can start using turmeric in other things. If you really, really, really don't want to have it in your food, you can buy capsules of turmeric. But please talk to your doctor because you're taking quite a bit of turmeric every day. And it's sort of a bitter, it's not the best flavor. It really isn't. I don't know. Some people can do turmeric tea, uh, but I find that's a bit bitter, but you can get, there's a ginger turmeric, I think with lemon tea, that's not bad. You can make your own, but what I suggest, buy it in powder form. Don't buy it in, like, you can see the root here. It looks almost like ginger. The root is very difficult to use and you get, it stains your hands really quickly and it's just hard to do. So don't worry about buying it fresh. You can buy it fresh, even in Walmart, I saw it fresh but buy it in this powdered form. And to start, just take a like a eighth, one eighth to a quarter teaspoon of it and start flavoring your food with it. Even if you made macaroni and cheese, like Kraft Dinner actually uses turmeric to color their macaroni and cheese. Now, if you look at the, if you look at the package now, they don't use colorings, the bad colorings anymore in Kraft. I'm not promoting Kraft Dinner, but I, you look at it, they use paprika and turmeric now. And so there's a health benefit for you. Take a tiny, tiny bit and put it in your smoothie, put it in your tea, even your regular tea, add a little bit of turmeric. Uh, what else can you put it in? Any kind of soup, any kind of stew. Uh, just just make a habit of, of having your turmeric out in a little container and or a little shaker container and just shake a little bit in your food. Turmeric is the number one natural way to reduce inflammation. Full stop. Like it is number one. Unless you have an allergic reaction or it doesn't agree with you, my number one suggestion for anybody who's suffering with any kind of inflammation, and that's what joint pain usually comes from inflammation, use turmeric. In my healing foods class, you will get um, a recipe that uses turmeric. It's my mother's special recipe. So you get that in that class. Rita is asking about what about salt? Um, okay. Are you asking, can you clarify? Like, do you mean like too much salt? Does that affect arthritis? Yes. Okay. Salt our bodies need salt. First of all, potassium, sodium, we need good salt in our body. I suggest getting Celtic salt or Himalayan pink salt or Himalayan salt and crush it onto your food. If your doctor said lower your salt because say of heart disease, then you need to be a little bit more careful. But I have not heard that salt is uh, affects our arthritis. You can create uh, uric acid salts, like uric um, crystals, if you have gout. Um, so turmeric, start with a quarter teaspoon a day, quarter teaspoon or an eighth of a teaspoon, because it's strong. I, you can try the tea, but I find it kind of bitter. I don't really love the tea. I would rather just put it in my smoothie and just have it, even in your porridge. There was a lady, a learner in one of my classes who said she puts a little bit of turmeric in her oatmeal every morning. If you do turmeric consistently, you will notice a difference with your arthritis pain. I, I'm gonna 
I'm going to suggest that most of us will. Rita, did you have another question? Yes. Um, so how much, like, if you keep adding a quarter or an eighth of a teaspoon to this and an eighth of a teaspoon to that, how much, you know, like, in other words, how much turmeric is you Okay, you, to you, can't, you can't overdo turmeric. You, you just can't overdo it. It's, it's, it has anti-inflammatory properties and it's full of antioxidants that, that's good for our body and our blood. It kills, it takes all the free radicals. So you can see it's got antioxidant properties anti-inflammatory. I would say maybe not go over two teaspoons in a day, but I mean, I don't think there is an upper limit necessarily with, with turmeric, but whatever feels natural in your day. If you made soup that day, put a little bit in your soup. If, you've, if you're if you going to have a, a, a smoothie or a shake in the morning, st stick a little bit in there. What you don't want to do is like have everything flavored as turmeric because it is kind of that sort of like dull sort of bittery sort of flavor. Um, I make chicken curry sometimes, not all the time. And Turmeric is part of the recipe. Now, one little tip with turmeric, which I learned from a learner and then I looked it up, is if you have black pepper with your turmeric, so if you're putting it in your soup, put both black pepper and turmeric, the black pepper helps you to absorb more of the goodness out of the turmeric. So the recipe I give you in Seven Healings Foods, I added, uh, it was my mom's recipe, I added a half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon of, of black pepper because it helps to bring out what you need from the turmeric. But number one, this is the number one food for arthritis. All right, let's get to the next one because I wanna have a couple minutes to show you the handout. Omega-3 fatty acids, foods high in omega-3 fatty acids is gonna help your arthritis. It is the best thing again, um, first of all, for reducing inflammation as well. So turmeric and this, and it, is uh, helps to lubricate your joints. This is the good fatty acid that we need and we can't get in our foods. So you have to get it from outside. If you don't eat fish, flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds. Chia seeds are those beautiful little tiny black, usually black, and they swell up in the water. So if you put it in a cup of water, they swell up and it's like a pudding style um, texture. So you can actually make chia seed puddings and eat that every day to get your omega-3s if you say don't like like fish. I'm going to make fish tonight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm, I'm always testing, I call it the test kitchen, but I'm going to take my, my fish pieces, I'm going to dip it in egg, and then I'm going to, um, I think I dip it in coconut flour first, then egg, because I'm not eating wheat or grains right now. And then I'm going to... Um, dip it in a in a mixture maybe almond flour with turmeric in it so i'm going to add some turmeric to my fish and i'm going to fry it in my air fryer there's so many ideas i'm going to try using turmeric again because i want to remember i need to use turmeric so this is your second food so we got our first one is using turmeric second one is omega-3 fatty acids in either either source vitamin d we need vitamin D. Most of us are deficient in vitamin D, even if you live in Florida. I honestly, we put our hats on, we put our sunscreen on. Are we really getting enough sunshine to give us that manufacture the vitamin D that we can in our bodies? Most of us are low in vitamin D. Research suggests that the people with OA, um, their OA will get three times three times faster, it will worsen three times faster if you are low in vitamin D. You need your vitamin D. Again, salmon, liver, maybe some of us don't eat liver, egg yolks, and mushrooms. Mushrooms actually are high in vitamin D. I didn't know that. If you like mushrooms, eat your mushrooms. So that's the third sort of area of food. Uh, so, so let's go back again. We've got turmeric, we've got our omega-3s, and we have our vitamin D. Yes, Rita. Okay, so I take a vitamin D caplet every day. How much okay. is the, um, you know, how much is the... Uh... How much do you need? Okay, vitamin D varies for people. It, it's usually an IUs. The pills are usually 1,000 IUs. It varies depending on the person. You can get your vitamin D tested You can through your blood. So next time you get your blood work, ask your doctor to add vitamin D. It's, it costs $65 to do it here in Canada. I'm not sure about where you are, but it is a cost. When I got mine tested, I was low. I was in the lowest, almost the lowest category for vitamin D. Who knew, right? Like 
I like to be out in the sunshine. So I wasn't, I didn't have enough vitamin D. I had to supplement with 5,000 IUs. Some doctors will say in the winter to, to do two or three or four capsules, like 3,000 to 4,000 IUs. You've got to talk to your doctor about it, but it's not unheard of to take a, like for a therapeutic period of time, like maybe eight weeks that you do 5,000 until you build up your stores. And then you go back to your one pill a day or two pills a day. So, um, don't underestimate how important vitamin D is. A lot of vitamin D, you're at risk, low vitamin D, you're at risk of heart disease, of cancer. There's a lot of things if you've got vitamin D lowered and it affects your, your arthritis. Um, again, mushrooms is the key. I, that's the new one I didn't know that actually has a lot of vitamin D in it if you don't like fish. All right, Rita's got another question. And then well, Josephine. Well, mushrooms? Uh, any way you want to eat the mushrooms, mushrooms, just the way they grow, they, they're able to, from the sunlight and the light, even though they grow in the dark, but they, they do get some light, um, have vitamin D in them. So however you want to eat your mushrooms raw or cooked. Thank you. Josephina. Yes. You a... uh, what do you think about the, uh, salmon, the farm raised salmon and the uh, wild salmon? Okay. I'm going to be pretty strong. Salmon. I'm going to be pretty strong about this. I don't eat farm fish. I don't, I don't eat farm salmon. They feed them differently, th different mm -hmm. things. There is disease that can happen amongst the, in the farm. I'm all about wild caught. And you know what? I can buy even at Costco wild caught canned yeah. salmon. And if mm -hmm. I can't get fresh salmon, the canned salmon is totally fine. I make, I make a salmon curry with set with a canned salmon. I do salmon on, on, you know, on a sandwich, uh, canned salmon is totally fine if you can't get fresh, but I would stay away if you can from farmed salmon. I just, I just would. And I've had learners on the class whose husband, one lady whose husband's a fisher, a fisherman, and he was just dead against it because of they feed them differently. They mm. treat them differently. It's just not the same animal. Like, you know, it's not the same fish. Okay. The last one, no, two more nuts. I'm doing, I'm studying about longevity right now. They say eat a handful of nuts every day to, to live longer. Nuts are jam packed full of amazing things. Um, they also help in fight inflammation. So you see all the foods I've talked about, all the things I've talked about for arthritis is reducing your inflammation. When you don't have an inflamed joint anymore, your joint just seems to like shrink. Like my knee does not look as like how it was looking. It was so fat before and I didn't realize how much inflammation I was carrying day to day to day, not even doing anything. I wasn't even walking and my knee was swollen. So nuts, again, good for anti-inflammatory, a handful of nuts. You want to know how many? I'm going to say 20 nuts or less. Don't overdo your nuts. Do not take the bag of nuts and put it down beside you. Get your little, little, little container. Count it out if you want. 20 nuts or less. Walnuts, pine nuts, pistachio nuts. Um, almonds. I, I do a little bit more almonds because I, I use the almond meal and I bread my chicken and my fish with almond meal, high protein, no grains, no gluten. So that's why I do almond flour. You can buy almond flour. It's pretty expensive. You can make your own. You just crush your almonds. All right. And then the next last one is healthy oils. All right. Olive oil has this beautiful compound in it. It's almost similar to the anti-inflammatory drug, the NSAIDs that, that can be pretty harsh on your body. It, it's almost the same, it's, it's similar, it's similar. So having olive oil in your diet, like the Mediterranean diet, they use a lot of olive oil, increase your olive oil. Don't cook with it. I, if you can use your olive oil raw, like sprinkle it on your salad. Olive oil cannot be, um, heated higher than medium so if you accidentally put it up high and it smokes you've killed the olive oil it's got toxins in it now so do not continue cooking with that pan turn that turn the stove off move that pan aside let it clean it don't eat don't think oh, i wasted that olive oil you, it, it will give you it's more harm than good to eat what you've just cooked with the, if the oil has smoked so things like um, butter or like uh, uh, coconut oil, you can go higher, right? With your heat. All um, Avocado oil is another really, really good one that's out there now. Avocado oil, smoking point is way higher. So if you're doing a stir fry, cook with that. Save your olive oils for 
drizzling on your salad or making a salad dressing or putting it on your fish after you've cooked it. That's like the best way to do it. Okay, I feel like we're at the end. So um, we've got just a minute or two. I want to just show you. This is the summary. I'm going to just stop sharing for one second. I've got it ready here, so I shouldn't take me too long to find it. Okay, this is what you're going to get as your uh, little gift on your end of uh, in your post email. So I put together arthritis management guide, tips and tools for a more vibrant life. So these tips uh, go through the different parts of your home and gives you some ideas on things to do to make your life better. This is what an OT would do. Then I go through the bat to the bathroom, to the living room, to the laundry, and then cleaning. I'm just doing this quick. You're going to get this. So you don't have to make notes and dressing what you should do for dressing. Now I'm thinking now that I have you all here with me is that I might, sorry, I might just consider updating my, that thing I'm going to give you and add in it the, um, the foods that I just mentioned and maybe the nine, the nine things. Yeah. Valerie's giving thumbs up. Yeah. So I'm thinking that might make more sense that I put in the, the nine ways to reduce, to relieve your arthritis put the five food areas that I just talked about, as well as these tips for the OT stuff. So I'm going to work on that. So give me a week or so, and then come back to this class. And then I can give that out as a post email. Cause I don't know, there's no way for me to save emails from anybody. Um, Rita, I love that you've got a little friend there at your house. Is it your, it, you've got him, he's flying. Sorry, I just noticed he's flying around. Is it your, is it your baby? What, who, who is this? My baby fly around? No, I have a little cockatiel yeah. that just loves Zoom. Okay, he loves Zoom. It's a cockatiel. Okay, I saw him a few times kind of land over wanting to I start know, to say I know, it's quite embarrassing. So that's, <laughs> it really is. Oh, that's okay. So look out for new classes. There's new classes on the schedule every week. Um, you know, I'm creating, all the other guides are creating new classes. So look out for something. And if you don't see what you want, um, you know, maybe um, ask for it. So you can do a feedback on the feedback form um, under the section that just says add a comment um, at the bottom. Like you can say, you can add in just a comment about a class that you would like to see. Cause we do read them. I love, I love getting feedback. Um, you get to rate it a one to a five star. And then any information you give us, we like to look at. You'll see now when you sign up for a class, this pops up so you can invite a friend. If you don't want to do that, you can just exit out, but it's kind of nice to invite somebody that you've met, say, here at Get Set Up. And then also don't forget to send to um, help at getsetup.io if you want a copy of the class, a recording, uh, if you want to suggest a new class or you have an organization that you think that might would like to partner with us or we would like to partner with, let us know. Oh, God. Okay. Um, that is the end of the class. Does anybody have a burning question they want to ask me before I head out? But I do actually have a few minutes, so I can answer some questions. You're welcome, Colleen. Anybody uh, have a question? Is there a test that can tell you uh, what type of arthritis you have and to what degree? There are, okay, so there are some tests. There's definitely tests for RA, for rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know the exact name of it, but they can test from the blood to see if you've got a certain marker. Osteoarthritis, I think, is a little bit different. I believe that the, um, even going to a physiotherapist, they, some of the testing and some of the stuff they can do, they can tell whether you've got um, arthritis in your joint. I don't know if there's a blood test actually for osteoarthritis, but for rheumatoid arthritis, there's definitely a blood test. Some of these other things like scleroderma, uh, reactive arthritis, some of these other ones, yes, there are some markers that will suggest that you have that type. Are you not sure what kind of arthritis you might have? Correct. My doctor never referred me to any arthritis doctor. And I just wonder if I should be approaching her and, and ask her to refer me to someone. Sure. I mean, there are specialists. Um, there are, there are specialists that, that deal with people with arthritis. It's, it's not, it wouldn't hurt, but they would probably put you through, you through a few tests and get some blood work. 
to sort of narrow it down because the treatment can be kind of different for some. Like what I taught today is about relief from our arthritis pain, whether it's rheumatoid or osteoarthritis or something else, fibromyalgia, for instance. But absolutely um, see if you can get in to see a specialist and, and then get some testing done so you can kind of find out what's going on. Typically, most common is osteoarthritis. That's the most common. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Rita? Yeah. So what you're saying is that when you have bone on bone, it's due to the fact that the arthritis has eaten away at your cartilage, right? Yes. Is that what you're the saying? Cart yep. The cartilage has been worn down. It gets worn more and more and more worn down. And you don't have any lubrication. Maybe you're not, you're not eating, you're not have a, enough of the good fats in your body, in your, in your diet. That can also um, cause some pain. What about, uh, you need what about these these gel shots? What would you say um, about them? Okay, I, I have personal experience because my father has bone on bone on one of his knees and he's gone for recently for um, a particular type of shot. Now there's different types of shots out there. So you have to talk to your doctor about it. He, my dad had both his knees done and it really helped him. But he was at the point of bone on bone and was really having difficulty even standing up. He's 87 years old. But he has now he's now doing some of his gardening this year. And, and, and the shots that you can get certain things that they put into your into your joint um, can give you some relief for up to like six months or so, so or, or longer. So for sure, talk to your doctor about it. If you've got if it's a situation, the x rays are coming back saying it's bone on bone, because that's you either get it replaced or you suffer with it. And my dad said, I'm too old for surgery. He said, I'm not going to get it replaced, even if he could get on a list. But, but you said he had he had his knees done. Didn't you say that? He, had, he didn't have his knees replaced, but he had the injection done on oh, both his oh. knees. About two months ago, he had this injection and it has improved his pain level. He's and gardening is this gel year. Or is it cortisone? What type um, no, he didn't do the cortisone. He didn't do the cortisone shot. He did some some new fancier thing, which I think is to this gel, this other product. Okay. Cortisone is the old style. They would put that in to help basically to stop the pain, stop you from having pain in that yeah. area. It's you know, that can be pretty in, in, you know painful. Pretty tough. Painful. It is, it's painful. I know. But oh. I never had yeah. the gel and I was Hi. considering yes. that. There's more, more and more research coming out and more technology. So look into it. Um, I, I, as I say, my, I only can um, talk about it because yeah, I have I'm just finishing up a class online. Uh, can we do it in 15 minutes? Does anybody else have a question? Uh, yeah. Is Jim available to put some air in my tire or should I do it here? <laughs> Oops, sorry. We've got to put somebody okay. on mute here. Thank you very much. I anybody really anybody a else have a question or we're all good? Yes, Feeling pretty thank good? You. Okay, so you're going to get the, the, the handout, but I'm going to upgrade that handout, I think, so I have a little bit more uh, information. I think in the email itself, I talk about those, the, the, the food, so it might be there already, but I might just put it all together in one handout. All right, take care, everybody. Thank I'm going to go. Thank Good you. to see everyone. You're yes. very welcome. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.